if we go historically into the facts of the case, in 1947, the country is divided based upon the two nation theory that the Muslims constitute a separate nation and the Hindus constitute a separate nation, a theory that Allama Iqbal and Jinnah have put forth and were successful in convincing the British to divide the country. Once the country is divided, some of the Hindus were left out in Pakistan area and Muslims were left out in India. In 1947, the population of Hindus in the then undivided Pakistan was 23 percent. Today in West Pakistan, the Hindu population is less than 3 percent. Even within Bangladesh, in 1951, as per the census, the Hindu population was 23 percent, which has now come down to about 8 percent. And where have all these Hindus gone? They have all come to India, not able to bear the persecution and the discrimination that was being systematically being practiced in both these countries. In addition to discrimination, especially in Pakistan, they have what is known as blasphemy laws. As for this blasphemy law, if anybody is, it's very easy to target all the minorities. They're stating that they have insulted Islam. If it is a charge is made out that the Islam has been insulted, then the life of that person becomes very miserable. Recently in Sindh province, a veterinary doctor in a village was targeted stating that he has committed blasphemy against Islam. And the whole village, the Hindu uh, houses were burnt and systematic discrimination was uh, uh, practiced against those people by the majority community. So when such is the situation, it's but natural, those coming out of those countries seek some protection from uh, uh, discrimination in a country in which the Hindus are in the majority. As far as Bangladesh is concerned, though Mujibur Rahman did uh, uh, constitute the country as a secular country, but the subsequent rulers made it theocratic. It keeps on going from theocracy to secularism, depending upon who is ruling the country. There also the discrimination is against uh, Hindus is very, very uh, uh, apparent. And the very fact that the Hindu population from 23% has come down to 9% shows that the level of discrimination in that country as well. This bill just provides for simplification of the process for these communities, the Hindus, the Sikhs, the, the, the Christians and the Parsis to obtain the citizenship in India by a natural naturalization process provided they came to these countries before 31st of December 2014. Instead of 11 years, if they had lived in India for about six years, that's good enough to get this citizenship for these communities. So, in a way, this is a, this is a, this is a, uh, rectifying or doing justice to those who are wronged at the time of partition. Some of the people, the, those who criticize the bill have two points against this, that this discriminates against the Muslims. But my question to them is, which Muslims? The Indian Muslims are not subjected to any of these. Uh, uh, provisions of the bill because they are citizens of India naturally by birth. So the question of applying this, this to them does not arise. But once you are a immigrant from Pakistan or Bangladesh or from Afghanistan coming to India, you come here because you are persecuted there, which is the case of the uh, uh, minorities there. But you also come here because you see better economic prospects. So the question of making it easy for those who come here seeking economic prospects is not the responsibility of the government of, uh, government of India. So to that extent, it only discriminates against those who come to India as a migrant. If you come as a refugee, persecuted there and belong to the minority community, you are getting the citizenship in India by naturalization is made simplifier, sim simple by this. But if you are somebody who came here seeking 
better economic prospect, but still you are a majority in those two countries and have not suffered any discrimination, then it treats them on a different ground altogether. Another point that made that's made by some people is what about Ahmadiyas and Shias who are subjected to discrimination within Pakistan? How is that the responsibility of the Indian government? They went there, they were happy to have a Muslim majority country and if there are internal contradictions within Islam because of which they are discriminated against, that's not the responsibility of India to undo such discrimination. It's the responsibility of the much bigger wider world and especially of the Islamic uh, uh, community in different countries to take care of them. It's definitely it's not the um, uh, uh, responsibility of India. Second is it discriminates against the Muslims, but which Muslims? If it's Indian Muslims, it doesn't discriminate against them at all. This is one big lie and uh, 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 and a uh, wrong propaganda that's being spread by some vested interests. If you are an Indian Muslim, you are a citizen by birth, so this act does not apply to you. So there's no discrimination against you by this act. The only discrimination is between those who come from Pakistan and Bangladesh and Afghanistan due to persecution and those who come here seeking better economic prospects. So to that extent, the discrimination is rational and is very, uh, uh, is based on some objective criteria and to that extent is not an irrational discrimination and will test the uh, uh, um, test of the constitutional propriety as well as tests in the courts of law.